Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis, the channel where we look at complex organic chemistry and explain how it works. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of batrachotoxin in A. The work that we will be looking at in this video was published by the Lou Group in JAX in their paper, Total Synthesis of Batrachotoxin in A, a Local Desymmetrization Approach. Batrachotoxin in A is part of a family of toxic compounds secreted by the skin of the poison dart frogs of the genus Phylobates. These secretions are used as poison for blow darts by indigenous people of Colombia and other regions of South America. These compounds are very toxic, and batrachotoxin in A has an LD50 of approximately 1 mg per kg. While this is very low, it is nowhere near as toxic as the closely related batrachotoxin, which has an LD50 of 2 micrograms per kilogram. These compounds act on voltage-gated sodium channels and cause instant paralysis, shortly followed by death. These toxins have no known antidote. This compound was first characterized in 1969 by Whitcop et al. and has been the target of several syntheses to date. So let's look at the retrosynthesis of this highly toxic compound. The alpha-beta unsaturated alcohol moiety could be installed using a singlet oxygen ene reaction which would oxidize the exocyclic alkene. The lactam ring of this intermediate could be generated using an amination and alkylation sequence using an aldehyde which could be generated from oxidative cleavage of an alpha-beta unsaturated cyclopentanone. The central six-membered ring will be constructed using a cyclization reaction involving the addition of an organolithium species to a carbonyl group and ultimately this intermediate could be synthesized using a photoredox coupling of a previously reported compound prepared from the Hadjas Parish ketone. So let's start with the forward synthesis. This started with the addition of lithium ethyl vinyl ether to the carbonyl group in a stereoselective manner. The product was not isolated and instead was directly hydrolyzed using hydrochloric acid, which deprotected the acetal protecting group and also hydrolyzed the ether, which tautomerized to form the ketone. This reaction produced a single diastereomer and the selectivity of this was driven by the steric hindrance of the bicyclic system. Taking this forward, the authors performed an acetylization reaction to form the distinctive acetal which makes up the framework of the target compound. They used CSA as the acid catalyst which protonated the carbonyl group allowing for the attack of the tertiary hydroxyl group to form the hemiacetal intermediate. Further protonation and elimination of water produces an electrophilic intermediate where methanol which was used as a solvent attacks to form the acetal. This compound was not isolated and was instead brought forward to the next step, which was a bromination. First, a silyl enol ether was formed using TMS triflate and triethylamine. An MBS was used to brominate the double bond, which acted as a nucleophile towards the cationic bromonium ion. Overall, this sequence produced the target bromide in an 89% yield, and the structure of this compound was confirmed by X-ray crystallography. With the bromide now installed, the authors proceeded to the photoredox coupling. This reaction starts with a diamine triflate salt, which reacts with a symmetrical diketone to form an enamine. The bromide then reacts with a trisp bipyridyl ruthenium-2 complex under a radiation from a fluorescent light bulb to form a radical upon abstraction of the bromide, which reduces the ruthenium complex to ruthenium-1. This radical then reacts with the enamine to form a new carbon-carbon bond and leave a radical on the carbon bearing the nitrogen species. Further reaction with the ruthenium-1 species forms an imine and re-oxidizes the ruthenium complex back to ruthenium-2. This imine is hydrolyzed to produce the target compound in a 70% yield. This reaction formed a single isomer and it is proposed that the diamine 
forms a hydrogen bonded transition state. And we could propose that the stereo selectivity is driven by steric hindrance, as the radical has to the same side of the molecule as the hydrogen, which is the smallest substituent. The stereochemistry of the product was determined by X ray crystallography. With this in hand, the authors could then move forward to the cyclization step, which desymmetrizes the symmetric diketone. Reaction with an excess of tert buley first forms an enolate and then undergoes halide exchange to produce the organolithium species, which undergoes an intramolecular addition to the carbonyl and forms the target alcohol in a 29% yield, together with a 7% yield of its enantiomer and the debrominated product in a 31% yield. The authors were also able to confirm the stereochemistry of this product by X-ray crystallography. The researchers found that this beta-hydroxyketone was susceptible to degradation through a retroaldol reaction. To avoid this, they reacted the compound with TMS triflate, which protected the hydroxyl group and also formed a silalenol ether on the cyclopentanone carbonyl group. This silal group allowed the researchers to perform a segusa eto oxidation. This reaction uses palladium 2 acetate, which first coordinates to the alkene and promotes the elimination of TMS acetate. A beta hydride elimination then follows, where the palladium abstracts a hydrogen atom and produces the alpha beta unsaturated ketone in a 76% yield. With this alkene now installed, the authors could reduce both carbonyl groups present in the molecule. The first was reduced with dibal H, which coordinates to the carbonyl oxygen, allowing for the hydride to add as a nucleophile, which upon hydrolysis forms a hydroxyl group. This was not isolated, and instead, both reductions were carried out in one pot. As the carbonyl group on the six-membered ring was much more stable, the authors needed to use lithium-aluminium hydride to reduce it, which is a stronger reducing agent, but reacts in a similar manner to dibal. With the hydroxyl groups now revealed, the next step of the synthesis was an acetylization reaction. This was carried out using dimethoxypropane and PTSA as the acid catalyst. This protonates one of the oxygen atoms and allows it to be eliminated, producing a methyl oxocarbenium, which is rapidly attacked by the least sterically hindered secondary hydroxyl group. Further protonation and elimination produces another oxocarbenium, which is then attacked by the tertiary hydroxyl group, which is on the same face of the molecule and best orientated to intercept it. This produces a six-membered acetal. This compound was not isolated, but instead was directly reacted with ozone in an ozonolysis reaction. If you want to see how this was carried out, tune into next week's Simplifying Synthesis, where we will look at the completion of this deadly toxin. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have anything else you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below.